become unapprovable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Okay. So you guys, you've heard these verses. People have said these verses. There is none righteous, not one. No one understands. No one seeks after God. They all turned aside. They have together become unprofitable, like kind of like not beneficial, kind of useless, kind of like just there. There is not one who does good, not one. That's crazy. That's some strong statements, yeah. right? That's like you guys suck. Uh -huh. <laughs> like, yeah. That's strong. So, so I'm gonna start here. So, so none, right? None. What did it say? Righteous. Mm -hmm. What else, guys? It said, uh, understand the one understands. Understands. None mm -hmm. seeketh after God. None seeks God. What else, guys? Um, yeah, they all have turned aside. Okay. Um, what else? They have to give. But they're not beneficial. Are okay. you doing all the nuns? No, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just like with Catholics. No. <laughs> oh, man, I'm funny today. I'm going to still be sleepy because I'm sleepy. I'm goofy. Non, non profitable. Man, that's a hard word to say, bro. I'll be looking at it like. Profitable. Profitable. Prof, prof, I got to say profitable. Like, I mean, like I'm like a, a doctor or something. Because I can't say like smoothly, like pro, profitable, profitable. Oh, I almost Probably. said it. Yeah, I almost Probably. said it. I almost said it. That's good. Say it. Profitable. Man, that's how I need to say it. You're right. Hispanic, man. Yeah. So, right. none righteous, none understand, none seeks God, none does good, and none, uh, none is profitable or does what is profitable. Have you guys ever seen anybody who, who understands? Have you guys ever seen somebody who seeks God? Have you guys seen anybody that does good? Have you seen anybody doing stuff that's profitable or categorized as righteous? You have. So these verses, like if we don't look at them the right way, it's kind of like con uh, contradicting, right? But but we've heard these verses, and then we can we can either say there is absolutely none righteous, none does good, nobody understands, and nobody seeks God. But then we see other verses, like in Hebrews eleven, it says that. Those who come to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So does God not reward anybody because nobody sees, seeks him? And then it says in 2 Corinthians um, 5.21 that the one who knew no sin became sin so that we can become the righteousness of God. And then it says continuously in the New Testament that we have been made righteous and justified by faith. So it's like, why, why is it saying this? So if we're reading the context, and I'm not going to read all the, you know, the chapter because you know, of time. Um, but we read the context. It's talking about humankind. It's talking about people be before Christ, uh -huh. people who are not born again. And that's why we needed to be born again. Um, so let me take it from there. So, sorry. Yes. So this is talking about, like, before Jesus comes into our life? Like, basically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause, and this is why. Watch. We're going to move on to this one. Okay, so if we're in Romans 3, we're going to go down to Romans 3, verse 23, which we know of as well. And it says, all have what? Sin and fall short of the glory of God. Okay, so all have sin. And then we're going to keep reading. Okay, this is what we're going to do. Let's go to Romans 5. Romans 5? Yes. I just got to be reading that though. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, it was real. Sure. Sure. Connected a little bit just okay. to get some understanding. Two, three. Mm -hmm. All right, verse 6. So it says, we need a little, a little time? Yeah, verse, right. okay. verse 6. Okay. So Romans 5, verse 6. For when we were still without strength, so this is past tense, right? Were still without strength. In due time, Christ died for the who? Ungodly. So it sounds like these, mm -hmm. right? So Christ died for the ungodly. Um, we were 
past tense. What the heck was that? Okay, without strength. Man, I gotta learn how to um, write better, right? You guys are like, man, what is he right? Without strength. And then what does it say? Christ died for those who were righteous or for those who will never be righteous. Ungodly. Or he just died for the ungodly. And when we look at ungodly, it sounds like that stuff right there. Mm -hmm. I was like mustard in a hot dog or something. So Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet perhaps for a good man, someone would even dare to die. So it's saying like, man, nobody like people would like barely even die for somebody who's righteous. Right. Somebody who's like does the right thing. Somebody who always gives me and helps me um, or even a good man. Someone would even dare to die. And then it describes Christ right here. But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, mm -hmm. Christ died for us. So it's saying like Christ didn't die for us because we were good people. Christ didn't die for us because we were righteous. He didn't die for us because we were doing all the right things. He died for us and we were still sinners. We were still the nun. <laughs> we were still the nun, right? Yeah. That's crazy. That's so crazy. So it shows you that Jesus loves sinners. God loves sinners. He doesn't love the lifestyle. He doesn't love the nature. He doesn't love the acts and the, and the works and the behavior. The sin itself, of course, because it says that in God there is no sin. There is no evil. There is no darkness. But he loves the people. There's a value in the people if Christ will come and die for sinners, not for those who were righteous and did good.